before every instruction in the binary, insert a call to this function. And that function, all it does is it increments a variable, a global variable called instruction call. So this is the main routine. This is the instrumentation routine, which actually inserts call to some function. And that is the function which does whatever you want. So this is the part where you can put in all your logic, all your code that you want to do when you examine every instruction. So you can get the values of registers, you can get the val uh, values from the stack, you can maybe change them, you can do whatever you want. And all that goes inside this part. So, uh, like I said, this is the output of, uh, we are actually uh, instrumenting this one binary, ls, slash bin slash ls, that is the binary that we are instrumenting right now, and the output of ls is actually shown here, and this is the output of my bin script, which prints out how many uh, instructions have been actually executed. Like I said, this is not necessarily the total number of instructions, only the set of instructions that actually get executed. So, uh, how can we use this to detect key bugs? So, uh, this is the algorithm that I use to uh, find out if there is any vulnerability that is related to the heap, an overflow, a use after free, or anything like that. So. First, to keep a list of used and free chunks. And if input is read to any of these chunks, check the sizes and number of bytes being read. So in case it's a structured object, so input might be read into somewhere in between the chunk. So if you have a structure, it's not necessarily the top of the chunk that you read. It's somewhere in between. So in that case, you need to okay, check for input being read into an address inside a chunk. So, if input is read into a free chunk, then it's a use after free. If number of bytes is greater than the size of chunk, it's a heap overflow. Now is this case. If the uh, start of the chunk plus size minus address. So this is actually the part that's, uh, you know, how much is left for the chunk. If you start at the middle, you have how many left. That is what this gives. And if that is less than the number of bytes that are being read in, Again, that's another heap overflow. So using this, you can detect heap overflows, use after freeze, and all such vulnerabilities. And so right now, I uh, implemented uh, the ins instrumentation. I have done it for uh, input reading functions like fgetus, getus, and read functions. But there are a lot of other functions which could copy input from one buffer to somewhere on the heap, like string and copy, mem copy, and scanf also is another input reading function. These have to be done, uh, and I haven't yet done it. So these are the alerts which my pin, which my script throws. If the same chunk is returned by malloc more than once, that means I have two pointers pointing to the same memory location, which can be used for something called double free corruption. When the same chunk is going to be freed more than once, again, that is the uh, scenario that I just described. When you can free the same chunk twice, it's called a double free. And when input crosses chunk boundaries, standard case of heap overflow. And then when input is copied to free chunks, and that is another standard case of a use after free vulnerability. So right now I've written the code for this. It's around 200 lines of code, uh, which is actually excluding the comments that I've written. So, We'll see uh, if it actually works. So in order to actually test out my script, I got a binary from an actual CTF uh, as this qualifiers, which happened in 2016 or so. And I tried, uh, there was, statically, I found out a vulnerability. Uh, while editing a chunk, you can overflow it. But I wanted to see if my script would actually do it. So I prepared a demo of it. Because sometimes things can go absolutely wrong if you are trying it out right now. So the 
binary's name is phi. And uh, the vulnerability is in this edit node functionality, which I'm editing here. Right. So that says when I get this message printed out. Overflow while writing 0x4a bytes to this address. So this was actually a little difficult to find out statically, reversing it. You had to keep track of a lot of variables, a lot of pointers. But uh, this was just a random binary that I took out from the CTF. And I just decided to win it. And it actually uh, does print out the message. It actually gives out the alerts. So, which is uh, what I was aiming for. So, uh, like I said, C or C++. Writing such a big line of code in C or C++, it's not actually feasible. If you, uh, in my case, when I'm playing a CTF, and I, I find, uh, I want to actually write a pin script. It's not easy to write 200 lines of C++ code in 48 hours and then do other challenges. So that is, where, that is when I found upon this one uh, GitHub repository, github.com slash blank wall. They actually implemented this whole functionality in Python. Python is actually much more easier to code than C or C++. So, Again, this repository is not perfect. It still hasn't implemented all of the functionalities uh, that PIN provides. So if you want, uh, if you are in the starting phase of using PIN, you can use Python PIN. But if you have, uh, have already developed a sort of command over the whole framework, then you might be a little more comfortable using the C or C++ version, which gives you a little more uh, power over the whole script. So, uh, yeah, this is actually the, uh, the old instruction count routine that I showed earlier. So this one, uh, it counts the number of instructions in each basic block. Right. So that is what is being printed out. So right. you can actually see the difference here itself, how much the number of lines of code actually differ. So uh, this is the output of uh, instrumenting the slash pin slash ls using this instruction count. Right. So uh, like I said, my code to actually check for heap bugs was around 200 lines in C or C++. But writing the same thing in Python is not even 100, not even half of that. And it also preserves the same functionality too. Although it might be a little slower, but I guess that we can accomplish. Dynamic binary instrumentation. Right. 
So, uh, any questions about this so far? No questions. All right. So, how much extra overhead does it have uh, on top of a regular processor? Uh, considering the fact that it inserts a call to a function before every instruction, I'd say a really big overhead. I mean, uh, but what I did was to add the uh, the code that I showed, it would insert a call to a function before every instruction. But the code that I've written, uh, that adds a call to a function only before, say, fgetS or getS. So, if, because I want to check the arguments, right? I want to see if gets could be used to read input to anywhere. I want to check if it's read into any of the chunks that I have, I have in my list. Okay. So, in order to do that, I can add a call to uh, and insert a call just before this fkts. So comparatively, this one might be a little less overhead. Yes? For heap workflows, you have to the for the false for the for the application to work. I'm sorry, you're What is the false for the That means how many false for the How many false for the get? Because in any application, there will be many syscalls. Right. So, when you are testing all the syscalls, all the malloc is allocated, yes. and when it is getting free and all that. So, uh, is it really uh, like uh, every malloc, every time malloc is getting free, there is an option where we can override it. There may be, in some cases, it cannot be. Uh, okay. The script only throws an alert if it is actually overflow. If there is no bounce checking, only then the script will throw an alert. If, okay, I, I didn't, is that your question? Because I didn't solve the script, so I thought. Okay, uh, but there are problems with this. One question is that in strip binaries, you don't really uh, you know, have the function names. So you can't really find out if a function being called is actually malloc. Okay. So that is actually a false positive. That, I, uh, that would happen. Is your script uh, open source? I mean, is it Git or just close source? Yeah, I probably open source this. Okay. So, uh, one question which I expected was why did I start with heap overflows? Why not stack overflows? Okay, I'll answer that question myself. I wish my NSM exams would be like this. I say the question and answer it myself. <laughs> So, uh, heap is actually used for dynamic binary instrument, dynamic memory allocation, right? So, memory is actually obtained during runtime, and that is also what Win does. It instruments it at runtime. So, by start overflows, the uh, buffers are actually allocated during compile time. So, you don't really have a fixed size unless you see the code. So, Unless you actually look at the code and find out the buffer is this, the, its size is supposed to be this much, you, don't, you can't really uh, you know, find out what is the length of the buffer. But if you are doing a malloc, you know exactly how many bytes are going to be allocated. If you are, uh, using, a, if you are using a malloc, you know how many buffers there are. So uh, that is actually one question which I have expected. But, uh, any more questions?